floor of our apartment building Airbnb. so we, we thought we'd come to the top floor to see what it's like and say it's empty a bit echoey but the view is incredible look at that so we'll um, go downstairs where it's a bit less echoey because it's so echoey up here but we thought it's quite cool to come see it from the top so yeah we're back in our room now very big. Very First thing, we want to tell you what a drama we had. So we crossed the border to Bolivia yesterday. Yeah. Easy peasy, no problems. Like you will see, we made a video how to cross the border. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> then we got uh, cr through the border. We asked, um, we showed a collective guy an address of our Airbnb and asked him where in La Paz area he could drop us off. So it's the closest to our Airbnb. He looked at it didn't say much, he just said he's gonna drop us off at the bus station and it, there will be buses going to that address. So we didn't think anything of it. Went there, he pointed us to the right direction, then we went, um, had a look at the buses, they were like a big double-decker buses, which were a bit like, hmm, okay, we are in La Paz, on the outskirts, we have to get to the center, but, um, that's a bit strange. Anyway, uh, we showed the picture of the address to the bus um, um, company and they said, yeah, yeah, the bus is going there. And I said, yeah, it's historical central center, historical of La Paz. Yeah, 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 all going there. We paid. Then they said to us the price was 100 solas each for a first class seat. They said 100 solas each and we thought, um, okay. A bit strange. And we'll no, sorry, 100 bolivianos. Oh yeah, so each. 100 Bolivianos each. So like 10 pounds each. 10 pounds each. Um, well, I guess we were on the outskirts, we had to come down into the middle. And we thought... Um, it's a bit much. And we showed them the address again and... and i show you the picture of the address. Here we go. So this is the address. Hang on. So... so Santa Cruz, 322 La Paz. So we showed them that. They were like, yeah, yeah, it's going there. And we're like, okay, and then there's the price, and we're like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. And uh, I said to Kasia, this does, something doesn't feel right here. This doesn't feel normal that we're paying that much to get to the centre of the city. But I felt like, I'm tired, I'm grumpy, I'm hungry, we didn't eat anything by this time. I thought, you know what, just pay the money and go, like, yeah. I don't care Maybe it's because we had, like, proper nice first-class seats, and we yeah. thought maybe that's why. So we got on the bus and um it was going and we're like okay and then i was looking on the map and i saw it was going out of la paz we were heading further and further out of the city then we were out the city going along the motorway and i was like okay we're not going to the center of la paz we asked a guy next to us who said um we I need... even showed him a map and saying, are we going to here? Because by this point, we figured it out that we're going to Santa Sa Cruz City, not Santa Cruz Santa Road. Cruz City, which is hundreds of miles away. Yeah, and I showed him and I pointed to Santa Cruz and I said, are we going to Santa Cruz? He said, no. Are we... And I pointed to La Paz. We're going to La Paz? He said, yes. Yeah, Honestly. he said that. And another lady who came on who was selling stuff, we also asked her. She said, yeah, it's fine. So he said, yeah, we were trying to get to this area, this road, Santa Cruz in La Paz. And this bus is going to Santa Cruz, the city, the other side of the country. And like half an hour into this uh, bus ride, and we're like... The bus driver actually... Luckily, the bus driver stopped yeah. to go buy something. So Kashuk got up and asked him and said, look, where are we going? And, and I said, showed him again the picture of the address and I pointed La Paz and then he po uh, then he saw uh, Santa Cruz and the address and he was like, yeah, yeah, we're going there. And I thought, I asked him what time we'll get there and he said, in the morning. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I thought, no. I said, Santa Cruz, Calais, La Paz. 
and then he was like oh okay no you have to get out so we got we got our big backpacks we got off the bus on the motorway we <laughs> yeah, crossed the other side of the motorway luckily there were collectivos there and we paid like uh one 150 boliviano 150 bolivianos <laughs> which is so cheap to get back into the center of la paz and by that time if we'd looked into it more it would have been easy to get the cable car down to where we are but we were just so like headaches, tired, stressed. So we just got a taxi. And we like cost us 50 Bolivianos. Yeah, I think he did really pass off anyway. Oh, but so drama, drama so here in the past. Yeah. So we're gonna show you around, we're gonna do things. We've got a free walking tour today and we've got a couple of other things we wanna do which we wanna show you. So we'll tell you all about La Paz uh, later on. So we're going on our free walking tour now. Uh, we're almost sprinting there because uh, we've got 10 minutes to get there and it's 10 minutes away. <laughs> yeah. um, and so we're walking down here, it's really nice down here. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you when we get to, to the Plaza place. Sucre. Once we find them. Yeah. Please guys, take a look to this building and tell me what you think it is. Uh, guys, this is San Pedro prison. Okay, and it's an active prison in the middle of the city. Let me explain why, you know, some people are shocked, they can't believe we have a prison right in the middle of the city. The reason, the building, you see the building, it's hard to guess it's a prison, right? Especially because it's painted in pink. But, the building at first, it was a monastery, then it became a military fort, and then the government improvised a prison to hold only 400 inmates. But right now the prison is holding a bit more, yeah, 3,000 inmates plus, yes, a bit more, yeah. plus like a thousand more people between ladies and kids, the families of the inmates. An easy way to understand this prison is to see it as a city inside other city or a city into other city, you know? It's because inside they have their own democratical, economical, social, and even some kind of legal organization. And yes, everything is ruled by the same inmates. At this point, I need to say, guys, there are only 15 to 17 guards protecting only the perimeter of this prison. Okay, that's it. There is no guards inside. Where people can pay even 10,000 US dollars for a very luxurious not cell. No, it's more like a little flat with a private bathroom, private kitchen, also access to laptops, tablets, phones, and if they need Wi Fi for those devices, oh yes, recently we heard about it, it was crazy. Looks like Wi-Fi is the only thing for free in this prison because they steal it from the hotel right on the corner. Yes. But on the, for example, if you really have a lot of money, yeah, I mean a lot, you better invest in real estate, for example. Yes, you can buy three cells, you can live in one, and you can rent the other two ones. Yes, you immediately start making money, right? You can turn it into a restaurant, a coffee shop, a barber shop. In the prison inside the prison yes so you can basically create almost any business you can find out here in La Paz guys I'm sure you heard this thing Coca-Cola right yeah. it's even stupid to ask that yeah it's because Coca-Cola is everywhere in the world let me tell you Coca-Cola is also here and not only that Coca-Cola has done a deal with inmates to be the only soft drink to be sold inside this prison you're looking for Pepsi or any Bolivian brand not at all. It's because Coca-Cola Company provides with chairs, tables, and umbrellas to these people for their businesses. Back home, ladies, this is crazy. This is a school of the for the children of the inmates from there. It's just madness. So we did first stop on the tour, San Pedro Square, outside San Pedro Prison. It's quite really interesting, really cool. Interesting story what he said about yeah. like how the prison ran. So now we're in the market. Um, yeah, apparently they used to do tours in the prison. I don't think even if they were still doing it, would we would we have done it? No. No. Okay. Now let me tell you a bit more about this market. Yes, I told you guys this market is something great on weekends, you know, on Saturdays and Sundays. Because from Monday to Saturday, this market looks like a simpler, you know. Also, there are some few vendors, yes, but only on the sides of the street, that's it. And there are, there are cars and all this stuff passing by these streets. But on Saturdays and Sundays, this market gets to cover more than 40 blocks in the city. Yeah, oh. we, just close, we just close all the streets, no cars. 
only people and vendors everywhere, so cool. everywhere just as you see. Okay? Now, these kind of markets are very popular here in La Paz. We love them. Yeah? Mainly because here we can get better prices, fresher products, but mainly for the social interaction. This was the first church to be built on this side, but also the first one in the Baroque Mestiz style. On the side, you can see pillars. On the lower part of these pillars, can you see a face? Yes. Yes? Guys, those faces over there and also the ones over there, those pillars, the same ones, those faces are known as oxen or the green men. And those are representations of our witch doctors. It was more like the Spaniards wanted to have this on this building because they thought that if we see this indigenous iconography on the church, we would feel more in contact with religion. So it would be easier for them to Catholicize us. Guys, here, this is Morillo Square. The main square of La Paz, the main square of Bolivia. You know, I was not exaggerating. What's the name again? Morillo. Morillo. Yeah. And the reason why it's the main square of Bolivia is because here you can find, for example, the former presidential and former government palace. If we talk about new ones, you can see them right behind each other. That huge tower up there, that's the new presidential palace. And that other black one, that's the new government palace. Okay? Guys, let me tell you this. You know, when Bolivia got its independence in 1825, Bolivia chose Sucre as the only and full capital of the country. Okay? But years later, in 1898 to 1899, Sucre and La Paz, we had a civil war, you know? It was just like one year. It was a very violent, really crazy civil war, but at the end, La Paz won the war. And we had the right to be the official capital of the country, you know? But as we are very nice people, we were trying to finish this conflict in good terms with our brothers and sisters from Sucre. This is the reason why we decided to kind of like split the capital in two, yeah? For example, Sucre got the title of the official and constitutional capital of the country and also the judicial power. But here in La Paz, we brought the executive and legislative power, which makes La Paz the official government seat of Bolivia, or if you want, the highest administrative capital in the world. This square is Plaza Pedro Domingo Murillo. You can see this man up there. Yeah. Now, why is this man so important? Not, pigeons. not only from Bolivia, but for all South America. It's because this man, he was not an indigenous, he was not an Spaniard, you know, he was a Creole. I mean, he had both Spanish parents but he was born here in South America. This is the reason why he was treated as a second class person with less power, less influence inside this Spanish society. He got sick of this, you can imagine, right? And that's why he and his friends, they were the ones who led a revolution and it was a successful one. We kicked out all the Spaniards from La Paz and that's how we got our first free government in South America but it lasted very little. It was a very short government, you know, because the Spaniards, they came back here, they took control of the city, imprisoned this man and all his friends, and they all were executed on this very square. Despite his fight was, his fight was suppressed, see. his fight continued with other two very important men in our history, Simon Bolivar and Jose de San Martin. Yes, you heard these names? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe you, you heard mainly Simon Bolivar, yeah. right? It's mainly because this is the man who liberated six different countries in South America. First, his own country, Venezuela, but then he also went for Panama, Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia. Yes, Bolivia was the last country that received its independence in South America on 1825, August the 6th. Yeah, and also we can say that we are proud that we were named after Simon Bolivar. Yes, because from Bolivar comes Bolivia, exactly. It was 1970, October the 6th. In less than 24 hours, Bolivia got six presidents. You don't trust me? Google that. In less than 24 hours, in one day. Oh man, it's a really complicated and twisted history. 
yeah, but some of them they were killed, some of them they were threatened to be killed, and they would scare the, the other one, other group would take the the power, and then other more violent and bigger group would come here and take the power again. We can mention Mr. Valberto Villarreal. He became really famous and also beloved here in the country mainly because of this phrase. He used to say, I am not an enemy of wealthy people, but I am more a friend of poor people. And the most remarkable thing he did for us, he eliminated the slavery here in Bolivia. Believe it or not, we had the slavery here in Bolivia until 1946, less than 100 years ago, you know? He did this, this was something great, of course, especially for indigenous people, but this also affected wealthy people. This is the reason why they conspired against this man, manipulating poor and indigenous people to make a protest on this square. They brutally beat him up, shot him three times in the body, threw him by the first balcony to the street. By the time he landed, he was still alive. They didn't care about that. They just tied this man up to horses to drag him all around Murali Square. And finally, he was hanged by the neck, half naked, on these very lambs. Let me tell you about Mr. Gonzalo Sanchez de Lozada, aka Goni or the Gringo. It was 2003, February, he taxed minimum wage, communications, and policemen, but he didn't tax the army. Policemen also, historically, have been always paid poorly. And this time they have to pay a tax. Man, that was crazy. That's why they started a riot, a pacific one against the government. Yeah? The point is that. There was a small protest of kids near this area and they saw there were no policemen protecting this area. So it was easy for them to come here, protest on this square, but in order to call more detention, they started attacking these two buildings. The point is that as they were under attack, they decided to use in almost immediately rubber bullets and tear gas against kids. Yeah. Policemen saw this, they saw some kids bleeding because they were injured. They said like, oh, come on, there's such an abuse of force. They shouldn't do that, you know, they should negotiate something with these little kids. It's a small protest, you know, because they know how to handle that situation. A group of policemen came to this square, through this square, to this place. But these guys, young guys with no experience, they panicked. They said like, oh no, this will be a coup against this government. We cannot allow that to happen. They called for enforcements. The army sent helicopters with professional snipers and they were the ones who were dropping them right on this on the roof of roofs of these buildings you know they didn't care about civilians on this square they just started shooting at everybody police and civilians you know it was crazy we got to see this on the news we couldn't believe it and of course we were all men super crazy about this because they were the only ones who were fighting and dying we couldn't join them because we didn't have any guns but we were able to attack government buildings, ministries, offices. Most of them were burned to the ground, believe me. The whole country turned into a, pan a, a pandemonium, you know, it's crazy. But the main fight continued here for two intense and crazy days. By the end of the second day, oh man, lots of fatalities. Most of them policemen, dead policemen, you know. The government decided to eliminate these taxes somehow and everything somehow calmed down. Please guys, take a look to the green building on that corner. If you want, you can stand up to see it. Yeah. It's full of holes, right? Yes, those are bullet holes. And you can still find some bullet holes around the square. For example, one over here, two where the president was killed, four over there, and of course, more all around the square. The clock we have on top of the Congress. Tell me something peculiar about this clock. The world. And they were, these clocks were based on the sundial, right? Well, we is known as the Southern Time, a symbol of identity, not only for Bolivia, but for whole South America, okay? Let me tell you this. This cocktail is called uh, the Two Fly, yeah? It's the most popular cocktail we have here in Bolivia. If you like it, you can order it anywhere in Bolivia, okay? Two Fly? Uh -huh. Yes, Two Fly. It has three ingredients, quite simple, but it's really nice. The first one is white soda, something like Sprat, you know. It contains also some drops of lemon juice, yes. And the last, but also the most special ingredient, is some chloroform. So, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. It's our Singani, okay, no chloroform. It's Singani, the national spirit of Bolivia. Arriba! Arriba! Arriba. Arriba.
Abajo, al centro. Al centro. Adentro. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It's okay. Yeah. Couldn't feel pain. <laughs> hey, come on, please, come on, please. Come we'll come on, here. baby. Let's go. Here. Chipa gummy, chipa gummy. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Chill, baby. Huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> So we just come back from that uh, show in town where we got picked on in front of hundreds of people. Yeah, as you saw, there was loads of people sitting on the steps, and the guy just turned to us. Obviously, we were the only foreign tourists there, and he just started picking on us. Which was quite funny. It was quite At funny. Least we entertained the other people. Yeah, and then he. We could understand some of it, and then he started saying some other stuff to us, or about us, we didn't understand, and everyone started laughing, so we don't know what he said. So yeah, that was interesting. So, uh, the tour was good. Uh, now we're going to go to Cholita Wrestling. Yay! So we'll tell you more about it on the way up there. So we're on our way to the cable car. Uh, it's just here, you can see it. And we're going to get it to the top. So we should get some really cool views from the top. Hope so. Shame a little bit cloudy, but a little bit cloudy. You can't choose the weather. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so wow. uh, we should get a ticket somewhere here. Guy being brilliant. Okay, let's go. Cash is happy. We found it. Yay! So here's the station. One of many stations across La Paz. And this one should take us to the top. And don't follow Google Maps. Follow the cable car. Yeah, don't follow Google Maps. Google Maps is so wrong. Yeah. So uh, we'll go see how much it is, yeah? Yeah. So we just got our tickets. Uh, six all together. Six, yeah. Six, six Bolivianas. Less than a pound. So less than 50p each. So very cheap to ride this. Yeah. Oh. but we still want to go we want yeah, to see it for ourselves. I'm still excited. It's quite an interesting story behind the Cholita's wrestling. It was actually uh, about one Cholita uh, went with her boyfriend watching wrestling and she didn't realize that it's all like staged and faked yeah. and when she saw him getting beaten up so she jumped in the uh, wrestling cage the ring the ring and started beating everyone up and people loved it yeah exactly so, so it's quite a cool story yes so um that's a, well that's apparently how it all started to lead wrestling and it's just become bigger and bigger and it's become a massive tourist thing now and just the ride here on the cable car is just incredible and look at the valley de la luna over there such an interesting landscape but the view over La Paz is spectacular honestly so if you're in La Paz even if you don't have to go somewhere just get on the cable car apparently it's supposed to be just as a the cable car is supposed to be just a main uh, way for uh, transport in La Paz but it became a massive tourist in uh, concern, blah, massive tourist um, attraction. Attraction. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it wasn't supposed to be. It was just supposed to be for people to get around really cheap, and and it is a great tourist attraction because this is incredible. I mean, we've seen views over the top of Medellin, we've seen views over the top of Bogota, but this has got to be, I think, my favourite. It really has got to be my favourite. This. 
And the thing is, like, because you see it's all in, like, a dip, a valley here, all around, when there's thunder and lightning, which has been the first couple of nights here, it really echoes around the whole place. It's so loud. So, yeah, we're coming to the top, almost. So, yeah, just appreciate the view a bit more, a bit longer. We just got off on the purple line. Uh, the name of this station that you need to get off at is Faro Marillo Tequila. That's the station you need to get off at. Here we are, Chalita Wrestling. Should we go? So here, these are the Sonia Claudina. Who's your favourite? Oh, Wara, the one with the mask. Uh, no. Elsa. I'm going for Sonia, I think. I'll go for Elsa then. Elsa's the one to go for. So, uh, some things you should know is this is only on a Sunday at 5 pm. That's the only time you can witness this. So, if you want to see it, make sure you're in La Paz on a Sunday. Here we are. So you can expect to pay 50 Bolivianos per ticket. 5.50. So let's enjoy. Lots of British men come here, you know, to, to Bolivia to work, to do like business commerce, whatever. And they love to wear this bowler hat, just like Charlie Chaplin, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is that there was this Italian man, Domingo Soligno. He was the one who brought lots of these hats here to La Paz, trying to make a business, of course, but mistakes wrong color and wrong size. These hats were too small and that's why British men didn't want these hats at all. He was afraid of losing his investment but he came up with a very smart idea. Chalita, Chalita, please come over here, take a look to yourself on this mirror and tell me what you think. Chalita goes there like, mm, okay, long hair, wide hips and unbelievable calves. I'm happy. Hold your horse, Chulita, because I got something for you. The hat. Tell me now what you think. Chulita goes there like, mm. <laughs> I look like a goddess. I even feel taller. But don't you think this hat is a little bit small? Not at all, Chulita. Huh. This is the ultimate fashion in Europe. No way, I love it. Can I keep it? For sure, Chulita, you can. Please tell your friends. She did, and that's how they became so trendy, so popular, that nowadays these chilitas are considered an icon, not only for La Paz, but for all Bolivia. If uh, the chilita wears the bowler hat, straight, and on top, single guys don't even look at them. Yes, don't even think about it. It's because this means that this chilita is married, yes? On the right or left. Left or right doesn't matter. In this case, oh yes, good luck. Mm -hmm. This means this Cholita might be single, widow, divorced, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. She's single, ready to mingle. Oh, yes. These skirts, I told you, they are not normal or regular. They are multi layered and puffy. Yes, multi layered because of the weather of La Paz. Something, an interesting phenomenon that happens here in La Paz is that, for example, right over there, it might be very sunny. You know, it might be burning, you know, really hot. But if you stay some time here, sitting on the shade, you will freeze, <laughs> yeah? That's the reason why these ladies wear from three to five layers under this skirt. It's also very puffy in this area because this puffy skirt makes look their hips wider than they are. The reason, you know, Aymara men love cholitas with wide hips. Also, something interesting I'll tell you about this puffy skirt. This puffy skirt covers partially what is considered the sexiest part of cholitas. Can you guess what it is? Guys, calves, calves. Yes, calves are really sexy, but really attractive here. It's because when you see a cholita with some brownie, shiny, very muscular calves, <laughs> oh man, that cholita is hot. Yes, it's because that's how we get to know how strong a cholita is. We are interested in strong cholitas who can work by themselves. For example, they can easily carry lots of potatoes, lots of fruits on her back. They can also take a baby in one hand and a baby llama on the other hand and walk 
up heels faster than any other person, man, that's the lady. <laughs>
So uh, that was the end of the Chilita wrestling. Now that was so funny, funny, bizarre. Uh, yeah, money well spent. Yeah, but it was really good fun. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. It was a little bit confusing a few times, but but yeah. So yeah, we really enjoyed it. We really recommend it if you're in La Paz to do it. Yeah. Remember Sunday nights, 5 p.m. If you have to do it. Yes. So that's <coughs> this little <laughs> doggy. Why are you barking at me? What are you barking? Whoa. Um. I've almost got attacked again. Oh, they always attack me. Um, South America dogs hate me. So we are at the witch's market. Look at this. A little bit creepy. Yeah. All these dead baby alpacas. All those potions. All these potions. A bit of aphrodisiac. Love potions. I think you burned them. Only if you would have known what they for. So much strange stuff here. It's like really cool. I love it here. Are these like tarot cards? Or oh. Maybe. Lots of like green stuff. Oh, like a little set. Like yeah. Look at this creepy. And we've got a little witch. Looks witch. like Dan. Huh? Looks a bit like you. The head. Same nose. Ooh. You've got all like fortune stuff, skulls. Dan almost fell over. <laughs> The creepiest bit though is at the front, we'll actually show you the front. Yeah. So they've got all sorts of like dried starfish. Some weird wood and... But as you see, if we go out the front, there's baby llama alpaca fetuses, which they put under their houses for good luck. They give it to you for good luck. And they put it under the houses as a gift to Pachamama. So not, not this? The, you know, the really little ones. Oh. Yeah. I see. Wow. Do you think we can bring it to England? Nice. Oh my god. Do you want to buy one? Put it back, right? <laughs> oh, it's down. <laughs> Some cool graffiti around here. Yeah? Uh -huh, Kasha and her crazy graffiti. That's me. That's you. Uh. I definitely would recommend this area to Spain. Yeah, definitely. Yeah? I, I think, think so. We've got the perfect location. Yeah. Right, we're staying right outside the witch's market. Yeah. That's why I couldn't sleep last night. That felt like a ton. <laughs> a nice graffiti. Cold? Oh, I see that was a good one. All these shops, all as weird as this. But that. It's just creepy as hell, yeah? Me and Cash are just like, uh, it's like a dried frog. It's like an actual dried frog. Because it looks really pretty. No, I'm not touching this. No? No. It'll bring you good luck. Do you feel you're hanging on a Christmas tree? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Queen Negro. Cool guinea pig. Black guinea pig? What but what? Black guinea pig? Juice maybe? Black guinea pig juice. <laughs> oh, squeeze her. <laughs> That's just bizarre. Is this snake venom facial cream? No, 
No, thank you. No? <laughs> Travel be old and ugly. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this Latiri, this witch doctor. He's the one who's gonna come here to the witch's market to buy all the things you see here. The herbs, plants, the amulets, candies, and all this stuff. And for this specific ritual, yes, we need an extra sacrifice. I mean the Lama fetus. Some people say like, oh no, that's gruesome, that's very cruel. How Bolivians can kill the llama just to get the fetus? No, we don't do that. Yes, the tradition says that the llama fetus has to die for natural causes or at oh. least not on purpose. Okay, if that's the case, this is a good sacrifice. Yeah, so this witch doctor, he's gonna come here to the witch's market, buy everything and take it to the place where I want to build my house, let's say, yeah, my house. So he's gonna make this special arrangement and start the ritual by the Aya, remember? We can burn everything, including the Lama Fetus, and then bury the ashes in that same place. So we can start building the house safely. So yeah, this is the end of the pass. We just got back down from the Teleferico. Uh, and overall, I think I really like the city. Yeah, we really do. It feels very safe as well, like crazy safe. We went on so many outskirts on our own. Yeah, and we felt really comfortable. Um, just generally, like the city, nice people. Very friendly, yeah. yeah. It's just a really nice place to to be. We're going to do a few things around the outskirts of La Paz in the next few videos, so keep watching. See you, See you later. Bye.